John chapter 14 verse 19 The indwelling of the Father and the Son Verse 19 A little while longer Jesus said a little while longer and the world will see me no more but you will see me because I live you will live also and that day you will know that I am in my father and you in me and I in you he who has my commandments and keeps them it is he who loves me and he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him all i see in this uh, few verses is love 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 and only possible by being in christ because christ is in the father and the father is in christ so verse 19 a little while longer and the world will see me no more how short is that he is only a few hours away from being arrested and after that crucified and then he will be you know buried there after a little while longer and the world will see me no more but you will see me the world will not see him any longer after he died on the cross and he was buried in the cave the world will not see him again but you will see me which i pointed to you i showed you 1 corinthians chapter 15 verses 5 to 8 in the post resurrection appearances you will see me they saw jesus because i live you will live also because i live what is this eternal life you will live also that is the promise to the believers because i live you will live also the promise of eternal life and earlier in john chapter 14 verse 6 i am the life right i am the way the truth i am the life so because i live you will live also it is a promise nothing nothing unambiguous i mean nothing ambiguous about that verse 20 at that day you will know that i am in my father and you in me and i in you now this in that day when all this shall happen so we shall see what will happen i am in my father and you in me and i in you you in me at the beginning when we started uh, this uh, study of the book of john i i i summarize for you so simply you in me we in christ right what is that salvation you in me that is salvation i in you i in you what is that sanctification made possible by the holy spirit in you and when the holy spirit is in you when you become a believer the holy spirit will regenerate you will overhaul you in spiritual terms it's called sanctification so if there's a spirit the holy spirit in dwelling in you so in that day you will know that i am in my father yeah and you in me saved salvation and i in you sanctification the holy spirit in you so you see the trinity you you see the trinity working here and when will the holy spirit come into the believer at the day of pentecost and after the day of pentecost on and after the day of pentecost on the day of pentecost the the for for the 120 who were in the upper room and for the rest the 3000 who heard peter preach and at the end of his sermon 3000 accepted christ into their lives and subsequently over the years until today if anyone 
accepts Christ into his life, the Holy Spirit comes into him and it will be you in Christ and Christ in you. You in Christ, safe salvation. And Christ in you, sanctification because the Holy Spirit is regenerating you. The Holy Spirit is indwelling inside you to sanctify you. Okay? Verse 21, He who has my commandments, again it is reminder, reminding the, the disciples, if you love me, you show it by your obedience. He who has my commandments, that means has my command, means what? Treasure, to treasure the word of God. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And you know the word loves, and you see the word keep, means it is to continue keeping, continue uh, applying the word of God, continue living the word of God, continue to know the word of God, to treasure the word of God. It is he who loves me, not loved me once and no more, but to be in that constant relationship with Christ. It is he who loves me and he who loves me will be loved by my Father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. How will Christ manifest himself to him? Through the word of God. So as you dive into the word of God, as you meditate the word of God, as you stay in the word of God, as you know Christ, you will find that the reality of Christ is so evident to you. He will manifest himself to you. So let's look at Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. And what did Paul write? Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Now what is this hope? This is the blessed hope. The, the, the unbelievers, the world do not have this hope. All they know is to live, eat and be merry. But what happens tomorrow after they have lived their time on earth? I mean, after they expire, what is their hope? They have no inkling, no idea. They have no hope. But we have hope. The hope based on the promise by our Lord Jesus. Even as we just studied the first few verses of John chapter 14. I go prepare a place for you. I will go and I will come. And then before the break, I... I go and the Holy Spirit will come. All these are the hope. So now hope does not disappoint because God's word is yes and amen. Hope does not disappoint. Why? Because the love of God has been poured out into our heart. God did not pour fake news into us. He did not pour hatred into us. He poured His love. The love of God has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who is indwelling in us. So it is real. All this manifested to us. It is real. So we should go through each and every day with our heads lifted up, our eyes upon Jesus, our hearts full of praise unto God for His grace and His mercy, yeah, for His love, for each and every one of us because we have hope. Elpis, E-L-P-I-S. The hope that will surely come to pass. So, verse 22. Verse 22. Here we have Judas. Now, this Judas is not Judas Iscariot, the one who was the betrayer the one who have left the camp, left the meeting. This is Judas, or also known to us as Thaddeus. 
So if you want some reference, you look at Luke chapter 6 verse 16. Luke chapter 6 verse 16. So even as Jesus named the disciples, uh, you look from verse 14, Simon, whom he also named Peter and Andrew, his brother, James and John, Philip and Bartholomew, Matthew and Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon called the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James, okay, and Judas Iscariot, who was also, who also became a traitor. So this Judas is the Judas here, Judas, uh, the son of James. Now, let me show you one more. X 1.13 X 1.13 Luke chapter 6 verse 13 and, and when they had entered, they went up into the upper room where they were staying, Peter, James, John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot and Judas the son of James. No more uh, Judas Iscariot mentioned because this is the occasion uh, after Jesus was taken up into heaven after his ascension. Acts chapter 1 in, from verse 9 onwards Jesus was uh, taken up into heaven and then they returned to Jerusalem in verse 12 went up to the upper room to pray yeah and you find Judas again. This is the Judas, the son of James. So not Judas Iscariot. Uh, I also mentioned the name Thaddeus. Uh, so that's another name uh, for him. Okay. John. Okay. 22. So. Um. Where am I? I seem to be missing. Okay, yes. Verse 22. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? You know what Judas had just sh uh, showed to us? His heart for the world. This is the missionary's heart. And he's probably the first mission-minded apostle in the team. He said, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us? So he's not a doubter, not like Thomas. And it's not like uh, others who ask, where are you going? Can we come along? Why not now? But he's saying, okay, good. Lord, you manifest yourself to us. Why not to the world? Why not to the rest of the world? Why not to the Gentiles? That is the world, the unsafe ones. Jesus answered, verse 23, and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. So, then we look at verse 23 again. Because the question is, how is it you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? So in verse 23, Jesus answered, If anyone, if anyone, that means anyone, not just the Jews, not just the Jews, anyone, so Jews or Gentiles, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my father will love him. Again, it is obedience, yeah, based on love. Because, I mean, love based on obedience. If you love the father, then you must keep his word. You must obey his word. Obedience opens the door to intimacy with God, with Christ. My father will love him. And where is the intimacy? It is stated here, and we, we will come. So God the Father and God the Son, and we will come to Him and make our home with Him. 
we will come and have fellowship with him, with the believer here and now, not in the future. Yes, Jesus will come and take us to the heavenly home. But until then, even now, when you accept Christ into your life and you love him and you keep his word, he will come. God the Father and the Son will come even now and make their home with you in you and if i can recall uh, a couple of very good uh, but i will not go into the details but i just say that, you know if you remember in genesis chapter 18 let me show you genesis chapter 18 abraham one day had a surprise visit from three people of the three one is the lord that is jehovah that is uh, our lord jesus in the we call it uh, christophany the appearance of christ in the old testament yeah so then the lord appeared to him to who this is abraham then the lord appeared to him by the tabernacle trees terebinth trees of memor memor as he was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day. So he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing by him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the ground and said, My Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, do not pass on by your servant. Please let the little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree and I will bring a morsel of bread that you may refresh your hearts and that you may pass by inasmuch as you have come to your servant. And they said, do as you have said. So, Abraham extended great hospitality to these three men. One of them is our Lord Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament. Okay, that is the Lord appearing to Abraham because Abraham is a friend of God. Abraham is a man of faith, also described as the father of faith. Okay, so and in this chapter 18, he, he, he did so well and uh, he also received the promise of a son. Yeah. So Then you come to chapter 19 in Sodom. Sodom, that was where his nephew Lot chose to reside. Yeah, he, he chose that place because the, the land was lush, you know, green, fertile, so he wanted that. But that was worldly. But Lot went there anyway. So in chapter 19 of Genesis, now two angels came to Sodom in the evening and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Here now, my lords. Now just now when Abraham addressed the Lord, it's L, capital L-O-R-D. That is a, a reverence unto the Lord, God. But here is my Lord, just, just, you know, a boss, uh, you know, here now, my Lord, small case L, my Lord, please turn into your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet. Then you may uh, rise early and go on your way. And they said, no, we will spend the, the night in, in the open square and so on. But you know, the, the perverted and, and the, the, the greatest of sinners, the homosexuals, were all waiting for these two angels. Anyway, my point is, visiting Lord were only two, not three, only two. And God only sent two angels, but not the Lord Jesus Christ to Lord, even in chapter 19. But in chapter 18, three of them, one of them was the pre-incarnate Jesus Christ. Christ. So, what is my point? Back to, back to John chapter 14, verse 23. 
verse 23. Okay. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. Abraham loves God. He's a friend of God. He kept his word. And my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. So, God the Father, God the Son. So, even you find uh, Jesus went and had uh, supper or dinner or meal with Abraham. He who does not love me, and that is if we point to Lord and keep my words, then they will not come. And that's why Jesus will, did not go to Lord's home, only send the two angels. So verse 24, He who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word which you hear is not mine. That means this command, this promise is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. So that is, if you want to enjoy the fellowship and the intimacy with God the Father, God the Son, then keep His word. Know Him and you will have the intimacy with Him. Now we come to the gift of His peace, verse 25. These things I have spoken to you, to you, only these 11 apostles. Again, I say Judas, the, the betrayer, the traitor has left. I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send, will send in my name. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. So these things I have spoken to you while being present with you. Now, you, you, you understand the context. The context is these disciples are a bit troubled. You know, because Jesus is going away. So now you are here, you are teaching us, we can learn and learn and learn, we can hear and absorb. But after you go away, then how? Then we got no more teacher, we got no more instructions, no more teaching. So that is the context. This troubled the disciples. So Jesus said, these things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But in verse 26, Jesus gave them the assurance, Don't worry. Even when I have left, I will send another one, a babysitter, one who will not leave you comfortless, one who will be there to teach you. But the helper, and you know by now, the helper is a person, right? Just now when we studied uh, verses 15, 16, 17, 18, you can see the reference. Uh, the helper is the spirit of truth. The helper is referred to he as him. And the helper is also referred as he. So this is a person. Right? So verse 26, But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he, he, a person, he will teach you all things. Will teach you all things. They have not, learned everything but even whatever they have learned they have not comprehended on many occasions they were perplexed I mean just the fact that Jesus said he will be uh, uh, arrested and he will be uh, uh, abused and he will be crucified and he will die and the third day be raised again even that the disciples took took a long time to comprehend and after Jesus was resurrected. There was still doubting Thomas. So, the Holy Spirit will continue to teach them as the Holy Spirit is teaching us. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all the things I said to you and bring to remembrance all the things that Jesus taught them because in the three years that they were with Jesus, they heard so many things. But after Jesus has left, the, Jesus, the, the Holy Spirit will remind them and thank God the Holy Spirit reminded them so that all these apostles could pen the words for our edification today. That's why we have got this book of John 
we have the epistles of John, we have the epistles of Peter, and then we have got Matthew and, and all the rest. If these people did not remember and they did not record, then today we got nothing. But you know, our God is a God of order and He plans all things and He preserves the, His things. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance so that the disciples in time to come can document all this, pen all this down, the scriptures, and bring to your remembrance all the things that I said to you. Verse 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You have heard me say to you, I am going away and coming back to you. If you love me, you would rejoice because I said I am going to the Father, for my Father is greater than I. Again, you notice uh, that Jesus is trying to comfort them, to reassure them, to tell them, no reason for you to be troubled. Do not have a troubled heart. So, he has told them anything, I'm going away, yeah, prepare a place for you, I will come back and I'll send the, the helper. And now he says that I will leave the peace with you. I'll leave peace, peace, I live with you. Peace is shalom. If you go to Israel, it's very common, you know, they greet you uh, when they see you, shalom. Uh, when they leave, the farewell is also shalom. Shalom is to, to greet you, it's not just peace, it's your wholeness, your wellness, in health and in everything. Everything shall go well with you. That is shalom. So peace I live with you. Jesus is not about peace. Jesus is peace and only He can give peace. Now, there is United Nations and there are other organizations trying to uh, achieve peace through negotiation and, and, and conferences and, and uh, programs and so on. But you know, the world has never had any moment of peace except maybe for a few odd years here and there. But other than that, it's been always the world has always been in a state of warfare, of conflict. Because man is always greedy and wanting more than what he has and so they want to impose, they want to expand the empire, whatever. But only Jesus, when he comes, then this world will have peace. Now, I also want to, 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 uh, to say that uh, we, we must be very clear about peace. There is peace with God and there is peace of God. What is peace with God? When you make, uh, when you accept Christ into your life, you accept Jesus into your life, you are making peace with Him because before you become a follower of Christ, you are an enemy of Christ. You are enemy of God. You are opposed to His holiness. You are sinners sinner still but by coming into a walk with Christ by accepting Christ as your Lord and Savior you are making peace with Christ you are making peace with God you are no longer his enemy so if you look at Romans chapter 5 verse 1 therefore Having been justified by faith, Paul wrote, this is what this is being saved. Because you and I, justified, that means just as if you have not sinned. So, what do you do to pay for the penalty of sin? Do you go to jail? Were you crucified? No. But we were justified by faith. By faith in Christ who paid the price for us, so we are saved. So, having been saved, we have peace with God. We are no longer enemies with God. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So this is one peace. 
The other piece that we are looking at in John chapter 14, verse 27, this is the peace of God. Because now you have the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit in you. You have peace. You have the peace of God in you. In spite of external circumstances, that's why you see even Paul and Silas in, in Acts chapter uh, 16, in Acts chapter 16, they were locked up in prison. But what were they doing? What were they doing? They were, they were praising the Lord. Now it happened. Uh, okay, let me find that particular verse, huh? Okay, yes, it's here. Philippi uh, Acts chapter 16, verse 25. But at midnight, Paul and Silas, they were in prison. They were chained in prison. And, and if you are chained in prison, you should be quite anxious. You should be quite worried because you do not know what they'll do to you in the morning. Could They could execute you or, or, or punish you, abuse you. Or you could be locked up in that place for a long time. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the prisoners were listening to him. Do you think they were sad? No. They have the peace of God in them. And they were rejoicing and the prisoners were listening to them and suddenly there was a great earthquake and the foundations shook and the, and the, the doors were open and everyone's chain was loose and, and they were free. Okay. So, this is but one uh, incident or a record of joy in the Lord of having that peace so the peace of God is in you in spite of the circumstances so the world may come crumbling down the COVID and, 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 and uh, maybe you lost your job maybe someone is sick and, and whatever but you have the peace of God in you because greater is he that is in you that he than he that is in the world so you have the peace of god because you have already have peace with god because you already have peace with god you now have the peace of god with you so that's why jesus said to who to his disciples to his apostles who are already his followers and he said peace i live with you this is the peace of God. So in this world, there will be tribulation. And after Jesus uh, leaves, uh, uh, even in the early church, there will be persecution and so on. But peace I leave with you. Okay? Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Why? He can only give what he has. I can only give what I have. And Jesus is peace. He is peace so he can give. So, peace, my peace, not the world's peace, right? My peace I give to you, not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid, because there will be still opposition, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the, and the Sanhedrin, they will still hate you. As we see even in the early church, Paul, then he was known as Saul, and he was a persecutor of the Christians, and he went everywhere to arrest them and get them punished, or even be put to death. And scholars believe he was there when Stephen, the first martyr, was killed. But the word here is, My peace, I give to you, not as the world gives, do I give to you. So this is encouragement. This is to tell them, don't be afraid, don't be a coward, don't be timid, be bold for Jesus Christ. And that's what, that's what Jesus was telling these disciples. Let not your heart be troubled just as we, we started this chapter in verse 1 let not your heart be troubled 
So you see, Jesus really understood and empathized with their situation and their condition. And he took great pains and even time and word to assure them, this is the Jesus who is compassionate, who loves us. And he is not one who turns away from the disciples nor to uh, from us in our time of need. He is there for us. And in verse 28, You have heard me say to you, I am going away and coming back to you. If you love me, you would rejoice because I said I am going to the Father for my Father is greater than me. So the fact that I tell you I am going away, nothing is lost because I am coming back. Unless I am going away and you see me no more, but I have said to you, I am going away and coming back. So you should rejoice. It is not futility. There is hope. I am coming back. And where am I going? I'm not going somewhere. Nobody can find me in some forsaken place. I'm going back to the Father. If you love me, you would rejoice, right? Because I said, I am going to the Father. For my Father is greater than I. So Jesus was going back to where he came from. He was going back to glory because he set aside all this to come down. But now he's going back. So what then must we do to have this hope, to have, uh, re to have joy in us and to have that peace? Focus on Jesus. Not focus on yourself, not focus on your situation because Jesus said, if you love me, if you love me, how? You keep the word. You keep the commandments. You, you stay in the word. You get to know him. Yeah, and obey him and apply the word. You will rejoice because I said, I'm going to the Father. And he added, for my Father is greater than I. Now, they are members of the Godhead. But even then, you find that Jesus had said so. Yeah, he does what he hears and sees from the Father. So, God the Father is the supreme authority and Jesus is delegated with the authority. All authority has been given to him. So, verse 29, And now, I have told you before it comes, that when it does come to pass, you may believe. So, when it does come, so Jesus was telling them, whatever I have told you, it will come to pass. Literally, literal fulfillment. And now I have told you before it comes. That when it does come to pass, you may believe. So, you and I should have no doubt, must have no doubt that Jesus is coming back for the body of Christ. He is coming back for His church and He will come. We just need to be alert and to be expecting His return. And now I have told you before it comes that when it does come, to pass, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you because he hasn't got much time. In fact, he has only got chapter 15 and chapter 16 and after that he is praying to the Father in, in chapter 17. I have not, I will not, I will no longer talk much with you because soon his arrest, he will be arrested. For the ruler of this world is coming. And who is the ruler of this world? S-A-Tan. And he comes in the person of J-U-D-A-S via Judas. Because we read early, earlier or last week when we studied, Satan entered Judas. So Judas was going to lead the team of soldiers and the religious leaders to arrest Jesus in the garden. So, 
for the ruler of this world is coming and he has nothing in me and he has nothing on me he has no power over me so who is in charge jesus is in charge any person in the flesh who is not god fearing who does not know the work and the and the plans of god he would have run the other direction any other person would not have come towards jerusalem but go the opposite way because if if he knew that people were waiting to arrest him and kill him, why would he come to Jerusalem? But not our Lord Jesus. He was obedient even unto the cross because the Father sent him for your sake and for my sake that he would die on the cross and pay the price for our sins. And so he stayed. And he said, for the ruler of this world is coming and he has nothing in me because God is in control. Jesus is in control. No power over him shall prevail. But that the world may know that I love the Father again. That the whole world may know that I love the Father. How? By evidence of his obedience. Obedience even unto the cross. Because he loves the Father, he obeys the Father. The Father sent him and he came. And as the Father gave me commandment, so I do. So this one, I ought to show to you, Philippians 2.8. So what did the Father show to him that he has to do? Okay, Philippians 2.8. Philippians 2 8, and being found in appearance as a man, he's God, but being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself. He is God. He has all the glory and, and everything in heaven, but he humbled himself, he, even as a servant, to wash the disciples' feet and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Obedient to who? The Father. The Father sent him to the cross and he said, Yes, Lord. And he went to the point of death, even the death of the cross. So, then you read this John 14, verse 29 again. Or is it verse 30? Of verse 31 but that the world may know that I love the father and as the father gave me commandment so I do so Jesus is the best role model he said love me yeah, keep my commandments and in case you 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 worry eh but Jesus how about you Jesus set the example he loves the Father and He kept the Father's commandment. So we are followers of Jesus, right? So Jesus is obedient unto the Father. So we must also be obedient in our love for Him and for the Father. So as the Father gave me commandment, so I do. Arise, let us go from here. Arise, let us go from here. Go from where? They were in the upper room. They had their, their, their last supper there. And they were going down to the Kidron Valley. And then they were going to the Garden of Gethsemane. Where Jesus will pray with the disciples, or at least three of them. Yeah, but, you know, anyway, we'll get to that. So, they left the upper room. And then they went to the Kidron Valley and to the Garden of Gethsemane. That, does it sound like someone who is anxious, someone who is desperate, someone who is frightened? No, my Lord Jesus was in perfect peace. He had peace in Him. He was in control. And it was 
the disciples who were worried, who were anxious, even at the beginning of this chapter, and Jesus had taught them enough and assured them enough that they should not be troubled. So now, the show must go on, so to speak. So he said, arise, arise. And you see the willing submission of our Lord Jesus, arise. Let us go from here. And so they did. Jesus is in charge. And so this is chapter 14, a very short chapter, but so relevant, so meaningful, and so assuring. So Father, we thank you so much for Jesus Christ. He is indeed peace. He, through him, we have made peace with you, and now we have the peace of God in us. We thank you, Lord, for his promise, and we look forward to the day when he shall come and bring us to where he is. And meanwhile, Father, we are so thankful that he has left us the helper. He has sent the helper, the comforter to each and every one of us. And with the Holy Spirit working in and through us, God, you enable us to do the works that Jesus did and even greater works. And I pray that everyone listening to this or watching this lesson will take heed of the word and from the knowing of the word to doing of the word. And that is obedience. And with that, you will have intimacy of the Father and the Son because their indwelling is in you and you shall have peace and the love of the Father and the Son be upon you and in you forever and ever. In Jesus' name, Amen.